Hey there from YouTube land, Dan here from Geekcast Video doing another comic book haul video. This is where I go through my recent pickups. I don't do any in-depth reviews, so you don't have to worry about spoilers. Most of these books I actually have not read yet, so. But I'd just like to talk about some of the books I picked up, why I picked them up, and give you a heads up on some of the books I'll probably be doing a deeper dive in that I think are worthy of discussion. It's an interesting week, it's a fifth week. Uh, although it's a fifth week, do have some some books to pick up, some books I'm a little bit hesitant on that I think were kind of put in my box because of uh, what I'm all, all, you know, which one of those, like, let's throw this in your box because you are subscribed to this and we'll see. But also got some good dollar dollar finds that I'm excited about. I'm um, starting with Daredevil. I got picked up Daredevil 228 from the dollar bin. And actually I picked up 229 to like 232 a few weeks ago and I was perusing through and found this one. So this is again, Frank Miller uh, around the board, you know, the uh, born again storyline. Uh, so I was excited to see it. I don't think it's, it's not in great condition um, as you can see, but it's in a pretty good condition where it's readable. And uh, I'm really excited to kind of pick it up and re read through it now that I have like, you know, these up to like the next nine, 10 issues. So rather excited about that. I also picked up uh, from Captain America, Captain America number uh, 407. Uh, this is the man in wolf storyline, the infamous man in wolf storyline. Huge fan of Cable and his ridiculousness. Also love Captain America. So big reason I picked this up. I know it's kind of an infamous story uh, for good and bad. Just kind of, I miss the silliness of comics sometimes. I know that Nick Spencer kind of did this too with his run uh, on Sam Wilson. Uh, I, I didn't love Nick Spencer's run on Captain America all that much, to be honest with you. I, you could tell what he was trying to go for, but especially when it kind of split off into two different books with Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson. Although when Sam Wilson, Captain America got into the uh, secret uh, invasion or secret empire, that was actually to me the best stuff he did actually, but then he was off the title, so who knows. But yeah, I just think Nick Spencer's sensibilities didn't really fit the character all that well. Um, you can definitely tell like he loved this run, uh, but sometimes admiration doesn't always lead to great books. But excited to pick it up, again, only a dollar. So um, I picked up another X-Men book, kind of an infamous X-Men book for my my childhood, X-Men number 25. This is, I, I don't think there was a book talked about more as a kid than this one uh, w w within me and my friends, because this was the, uh, when Wolverine gets his adamantium and ripped out. Like that was like, I think one of the penultimate moments within uh, I, my fandom growing up as an X-Men fan. I was, people talked about this all the time. It was like that moment when, you know, uh, that Magneto ripped out the L skeleton of Wolverine and it was a huge thing that went on for forever. Eventually that led to the bone claws. And then he eventually, of course, you know, got his, got a skeleton back. I actually have this issue, but I have it without this shiny little card. Uh, so it's got someone just cut it out. And then, so it looks kind of bad. So I figured, hey, for a dollar, I usually don't see it in dollar bins. This is, I think, I don't think it's worth much, but again, for a buck, I'll pick it up. Uh, and then I also picked up another Captain America issue. This is just Captain America 400, you know, uh, the, the Galactic Storm part 15, which is insane because I couldn't imagine anyone trying to do a 15 part story nowadays. Uh, I mean, outside of like the weekly series that they did for no avenger like any 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 time if there's like a 15 part story i think people would, would be like oh, that's that's too much anything above six issues usually or 12 issues uh people are, are out uh, especially because of you know the delays that tend to happen but so this week's comics have don't have a huge amount of new comics this week but some that actually a few series that are coming to end uh starting with harbinger wars number two uh number four harbinger wars two number four uh, I've been enjoying this series. It's Valiant has their uh, summer events each year, which I think are smaller in scope, so they're easy to follow, and they don't usually impact the other titles all that much. Uh, this one was a little bit more, uh, it wasn't as welcoming to new readers as some of the other ones, um, but I thought it was really enjoyable. It's not to me one of the better summer events. I thought 4001, for example, um, it, it felt like it was a little bit more important, but I did. I have liked what this has been going for, Matt Kent, uh, writing this. Uh, the art's been pretty solid as well, uh, but I'm excited to I'm excited to see. And now Valiant's going to be relaunching a lot of their titles again. Uh, I know Faith is getting a new series at Bloodshot, as you can see back here, is getting a new series. Uh, who's, which is not going to be written by Jeff Lemire, uh, which is kind of sad, actually. But it's written by Zach Thompson, at least. He's part of the writing team, who I do like. I've been really liking Jeff Lemire's run on Bloodshot. It's one of the more underrated, I think, runs on a character currently going. 
Um, which is weird because I don't like when I think Jeff Lemire, I, I think of all the titles he he does, but I often forget like, oh yeah, he's also doing Bloodshot. Uh, but it's, he's been doing a lot of cool stuff with that, from the Reborn to uh, Bloodshot, uh, when he had the Nanites gone, which I thought that was like the best run of it. And then he had Bloodshot in the Future, Bloodshot USA, like all these different mini miniseries. He's really, I think, done a lot with that character. So I, it makes sense that someone else is coming on because I think his story is kind of wrapping up. But, uh, but yeah, so Harbinger Wars 2. And if you're, I highly advise picking up a lot of Valiant stuff. It's really good stuff. Uh, their Exo Man of War series right now, it's that relaunched two years ago, or maybe it's only been a year, uh, by Matt Kent was fantastic. It's still been really strong as well. Uh, Ninja K, the Quantum Woody stuff uh, that's currently going. And usually with Valiant, they only put out four or five titles per month. So it's not going to break the bank if you try to stay up with their titles. And although it's a connected universe, rarely do I need to read Bloodshot to understand Ninja K. They'll connect here and there, but they don't have a lot of ongoing events um, that kind of bleed into one another, which is nice. Uh, another book I've been really loving is Isola. Isola. Uh, this is issue number five. I feel, I don't know the last, I feel like this book hasn't come out in months, but I feel like with bi-weekly comics or twice a month comics, those that are actually only once a month, like the, the times in between feel so much longer. Uh, but this is a beautiful book. Uh, the last, it was short on story, but it's really been picking that up as it's going. I still just love looking at the series. It's one of, to me, one of the best new series of the year so far. Uh, I always can connect it to Princess Mononoke um, in in both style and execution and, and storytelling, uh, but it's it's a gorgeous. The colors are just popping off, pop off the page. Um, so we're really excited to see uh, the, 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 I don't know if you call it a magazine, but Panel by Panel, which is a great comic book review and analysis magazine or whatever you call it if it's only digital uh, that had a great uh, look into this title when it first came out would definitely advise picking that it was recently not that panel by panel was recently not uh, nominated for an Eisner I was kind of sad it didn't win but hopefully you know they, they just see it as winning next year or something like that but it's a great it's one of the best to me one of the best examples of comic book criticism out there like I wish I knew half the stuff or was able to kind of break down comics nearly as good as they do uh, also, another series coming to end is Judge Dredd Under Siege. Uh, this was the Mark Russell uh, Judge Dredd story, and I've been liking this a good amount. I, I preface that by saying I'm not super knowledgeable of Judge Dredd, so I don't know how this compares to other, other Judge Dredd, but I do see a lot of Mark Russell with this, and it feels like he's flexing his muscles trying to get to more traditional comic book storytelling at the same time doing what he does best with social commentary, uh, with uh, having kind of uh, some sort of lean where he's certainly think, going beyond the traditional uh, comic book story, uh, really diving deep into really the structure of Mega City One and what it would re really mean for the people that live there. So uh, if that all interests you, this should be out in trade shortly. Like I said, it's only four issues. And what's it's good, this is ending, which is kind of sad, uh, but Mark Russell's also going to be doing Lone Ranger. Uh, that's coming out. and. I, I've never cared about Lone Ranger in my life. I didn't love the movie. Uh, my dad watched this TV show. He tried to get me into it. I never could get into it. Uh, but seeing some of the preview art for that and knowing it's Mark Russell, it's like that I've uh, actually added that to my pull list. So hopefully when that comes out, uh, I'll also talk about that. But I'm actually do a full video on just this entire series because uh, I haven't really done on any specific ones, but it's been quite good. If you enjoyed the Dread movie, certainly a lot of inspiration within this because it's kind of a similar idea where they're stuck in one location that they're fighting their way out uh, as well. A, a series where I feel like I'm on a very short list of people that both read this and really enjoy it, uh, but Exiles with Exiles number seven. Uh, this is, I, I, I love the Exiles since the beginning. Uh, so, and I was super excited for it to come back, and now it's been back, and I've been liking what Saldi and Amon has been doing with it. A different take than what, what the original, uh, but I love that now, as the cover indicates, some of the uh, old team and new team are kind of com 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 combining into one, uh, or at least it's showing up again, Morph, who I missed Morph. He was one, he was one of the best parts of the original run, uh, and you know this is still kind of, it's one of the last bastions of the Age of Apocalypse story because technically you know X both Sabretooth and and Blink are from that universe and there are not a lot of you know crossover big event stories where there's still pieces left but this is one of the few ones Age of Apocalypse and I actually own a 
most of, if not all, the Age of Apocalypse stuff. I might do a video about that as well, of my Age of Apocalypse collection, because that was, again, talking about seminal moments in X-Men history. That was a huge one as well, Age of Apocalypse, which was like, blew my mind as a kid, because that was bef before, that idea was super run into the ground about huge events that would completely revamp all the titles, and at the same time also like, looking at more of a dystopian alternate future. Obviously it was done before, with, but to that level, to me as a kid, it was brand new. Um, I talked about some titles that were put in my box because I do collect Venom currently and apparently this is the week of Venom because there's a lot of, I don't know if it's because the movie's coming out shortly or what what whatnot, but uh, I don't know if this is Venom, I'm guessing this is how you, pr how you pronounce it, but this is a one shot uh, by, uh, this is again, Donny Cates as well, but different artist on this uh and it's i think going into if you've been reading the venom story a big piece of it was actually talking about previous experiments done with symbiotes during the vietnam war which uh, this will be going into so i'm excited to see uh what what's going on here uh i'm not i wasn't i was i was gonna pick this up because it's only a one shot so i'm like oh, i'll see and i've been like when looking with donna donna cage the julianne R ramirez is the artist on this uh so uh, I'm excited. I'll probably do a, a fuller deep dive review on this because you know Venom's been huge lately. Uh, another, <laughs> so much so that we have new, we have another Venom series with Venom Final Host. This one I didn't plan on picking it up, but they put it in my box. I'm like, all right, I'll give it. I'll give the first issue a shot. Although five dollars for a first issue, so a little bit much. Uh, this is my Costa and Mark Bagley on this. I don't really know what this is about. It says the the first host, so I don't know if this is going back into way 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 back into the lore of venom that's kind of be reworked or what's going on i see we have some scrolls here so that's always cool i'm a, I'm a fan of the scrolls so we'll see where this is going but i don't know if this is going to be more of a throwback to like there we go well there's a venom ancient venom i don't know but we'll we'll see we'll see how, how this goes this is i believe is a mini series uh, i don't know how many <laughs> how many issues at this point i'll give it one issue if i like it enough maybe i'll keep going but i, I don't have huge expectations for that um, a book I, I'm growing expectations for is Extermination. I did a review in the first issue, and I, I liked it enough. I, I wasn't, I know, blown away by it. I thought there was kind of pieces that were very reminiscent of things we've seen before uh, that really didn't add too much to it, but I thought a lot of the characterization was strong, and it, I did like some of the twists that were there, um, but I just didn't see how it was going to separate itself all that much from previous X-Men stories. I hate the criticism. It's something we've seen before, because I feel like you can't throw that out too much, but when you're clearly like making connections to past stories i think it's important it's only the first issue so and this is being the second one but i i do like where it could potentially go so that's why i'm keeping with and gonna read issue number two um and you know this is supposed to be leading into the eventual uncanny x-men weekly series that's happening in november uh so and i will see how that goes and which makes me wonder because this is going to end earlier than that. So if like a lot of this will be resolved or this will be kind of leaving an open-ended only to kind of finally be concluded in the future. But this has been focusing on the time displaced X-Men that have long overstayed their welcome uh, for most people. And it seems like this is going to be uh, eliminating them or doing something. Uh, we'll see. But well, I, I do like the fact that, you know, it looks like Ahab is at least one of the major villains who is a villain that doesn't always kind of pop up. I'm glad it's not Apocalypse or Sinister as of, as of yet. So I'm glad when they kind of, kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, and lastly, the book I am most excited about, uh, and I'm kind of sad this series is coming to end, was this Ed Pisker's X-Men Grand Design. This is Second Genesis, issue number two. Uh, and this series has been it's just phenomenal. Uh, and it's what it is, it's basically Ed Pisker telling the history of the X-Men uh, in a very condensed way, but that is still somehow a complete story and doing it in his style um, that he kind of did for the hip-hop family tree uh, books back in the day. Um, I'm kind of, oh, actually, no, there's another one. See, look at that. The next extension begins in 2019. So it keeps going. So I was incorrect. I'm happy that it's keep going. I can't, I kind of hope he does this for the Avengers too, because I'd like to see that go on. I mean, the X-Men, of course, have, have all the history, but one of the best parts too is just how he links to all the stories to different events that have happened. It's just the amount of just research this had to take and within itself is like this a, a lot of time and effort and i'm actually really happy that marvel it seems like just said hey do your thing and they he did it and it's really great from the paper design to 
the look of it. It's it's everything you know I would expect from an Episcopal brick, and I'm glad that Marvel's kind of like giving indie creators like him. I don't know if you call him any creator, but he giving creators like him room to kind of tell the story or create his craft. So this has been fantastic. Uh, I, I was hesitant to pick up the, the, this copy because I was waiting to get the oversized hard hardcover. Uh, but I was like, ah, I'll pick this up because I, I, I do like the actual issues itself. It's, it's, it's normal size compared to, if I pick up another comic, compared to other comics, as you can see, for the most part. Although it is much thicker. Um, it is a little bit more expensive. It's like $4.99. But I do feel like you truly do get your money's worth. It's better card stock. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great package. So uh, <laughs> you can... Uh, I think you can kind of pick these up without reading. If you're an X-Men fan, to me, the, the, these are like must-reads. Uh, because it's just... It's just, it just so satisfying to see the, the history of X-Men kind of on the page condensed. And just realizing, man, they... That's some weird and wacky thing. It's very much a love letter uh, to that. So I'm super excited there's more coming. I completely missed that announcement. And like I mentioned, I do hope that uh, Ed Pisker does it for other teams, even the Fantastic Four or something like the, uh, the Avengers would be really fascinating because I don't know mu as much about the uh, history of the Avengers as I do uh, some other, especially some of the like, smaller runs during like the early 70s and things like that I'm not super up with. But most of the X-Men stuff I've read or read about in, in some way shape or form all right well that's it for me just let me know what you picked up this week in the comment section below as i mentioned i'll dive deeper into some of these books if you're any if there's anyone specifically you'd like to hear more from me about let me know and i'll certainly talk about that one uh, but just remember comics are for everyone the key is finding the right one until next time thanks for watching